6.1 objectives. Write the augmented matrix for a linear system. Perform matrix row operations. Use matrices and Gaussian elimination to solve systems. And use matrices and Gauss-Jordan elimination to solve systems. Okay. In Algebra 2, we didn't do this, we didn't do this, and we did that. Okay, so these are the only things you're familiar with in this whole section. So let's talk. Okay. I'm going to give you a system of equations. 2y minus z equals 7. x plus 2y plus z equals 17. Teachers, please pardon this interruption. This is the last call the faculty, staff, or a student that has not taken a school picture. Please go to the at this time. So here's our matrix. Excuse me. Here's our system. And you need to be able to write it as an augmented matrix. Okay? I really don't have any doubt that you can do this. It's that you've never seen it before to know what to do. Okay? If I'm remembering correctly, and I am, you know to do this. What's the last row going to be? You know how to do that, right? Okay, so let me make sure you understand how to, how to write an augmented matrix. Okay, let me get another color to make sure you understand this. Okay, done. Yeah. This is the augmented matrix. Hmm, no. That's the augmented matrix. Mm -hmm. The line, what does the line do? What does it separate? Yeah, separate the answers. These are all the variables. These are the answers. We're going there. Yeah. Okay. So if I give you a system, can you write the augmented matrix? Okay. All right, here we go. Here's a matrix. 3, 18, negative 12, 21. Okay, so if you'll remember from the objectives, one of the things you're going to be asked to do is perform matrix row operations. Okay, guys, in Algebra 2, we don't do matrix row operations because we allow the calculator to solve a matrix for us. Okay, we don't have to do matrix row operations to do it. We kind of do when we're doing elimination because that's what we're kind of doing. We're multiplying the whole row by a certain thing or dividing a row by a certain thing, stuff like that. Okay, um, <clears throat> but the old, old, old way that you had to solve um, systems of equations was with matrix row operations. That's what I was kind of telling you earlier that still kind of an old school kind of view of this. Okay, so here's what a problem is going to look like. It's going to say R1 and R2. So what do you think they want you to do on this problem? Yes, sir. Hey, Caitlin Turner to the office, please. Yes, sir. You got to go to the office. Please hurry back. I'll cry the whole time you're gone. What do you think they want us to do? Like, literally, what do you think they want us to do? Like, what, is, what do you think they want? Here, I'll tell you this. This is our one. This is R2, and this is R3. Row 1, row 2, and row 3. They just want me to switch them. That's literally all they want me to do. 1, 2, negative 3, and 5. 3, 18, negative 12, and 21. And then it didn't say anything about row 3, so I just leave it alone. No. 
this is a row operation okay because if you'll remember when we do when we do matrices in the calculator when we do reduced row echelon form what's true about this diagonal of numbers it is something you are correct what is it it's a row of ones isn't it I mean a diagonal of ones because that's how it tells me X equals this Y equals this and Z equals this do you remember that okay so if this is how I start and I'm having to do this by hand, would it make sense that I want a one in that place right there as opposed to a three? Yeah. So that's why that's what it's asking you to do. It's literally switch places of row one and row two. Okay. So what do you think it wants me to do now? Mm-hmm. The one I just got or the original problem? Original problem, right? The, these are all small parts of the same problem, so we're going back to the original problem. Is that all right? Okay. So if I'm taking one third of R1, what do they want me to do? So this is 1 and 6 and negative 4 and 7. What about row 2 and row 3? Yeah, it didn't tell me to do anything, so I just rewrite them exactly as they are. Okay, now the super, super difficult one. What's wrong? Correct, correct, yeah, T, R1. <clears throat> what do you think about this? Yeah. What does it want me to do? No, that's correct. Multiply row two by two and add it to R3. Okay. So what do we do with row one? We leave it. What do I do with row two? I'm eventually going to multiply by two and add it to row three, but what do I do with the original row two? I leave it. Mm -hmm. One, two, negative three, and five. It's like I start with this one and end with this one, so that's where it lives. Okay, so two times row two. Do we need to write this down separate or can we do this in our head? Do in our head? Okay, so two times row two. So think about everything here times two, and then we want to add it to row three. So two times two plus negative two, zero. Two times two plus negative three, one. Two times negative three plus four, negative two. Right, negative six plus four, negative two. Two times five, ten plus negative six, four. <clears throat> Got it? Questions? It's pretty logical. It's just like remembering where to put the answer. Can I show you? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's okay. It, that's what, it's just what was next. On our objectives, use matrices in Gaussian elimination to solve systems. Okay. In Gaussian elimination, when you solve a system with Gaussian elimination, you're almost not quite exactly solving the system, but you are. Okay. It's not going to look like what we're used to as a quote unquote solved system. So just go with me here for a second. Can you do that? Okay. <clears throat> Here's where we start. Three, oh, ignore that. Sorry. 3x plus y plus 2z equals 31. x plus y plus 2z equals 19. And x plus 3y plus 2z equals 25. 
So first of all, can you write me an augmented matrix from this? Okay. Three, one, two, thirty-one. What's next? Okay. So here, here's what we're going to do to solve. The first thing that we're going to do, what do we want right up here? A one. So the easiest way to do that is to take row one and switch it with row two. Okay. So one, one, two, 19, three, one, two, 31. And I just leave row three alone, right? Could I have switched it with row three instead? Yes. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> what do I want as my diagonals right here? I want one as my diagonal, but this triangle right here, do you remember what this triangle is? If these are all ones, when we did it in our calculator, these are all ones and both of these triangles right here were zeros. Okay, if we're doing Gaussian elimination, we want these three right here to be zeros. Okay, does that make sense? We want these three to be zeros. These three are not zeros in Gaussian elimination. Only these three are right here. Okay, so follow with me for a second. Here's what I want to do. I want to multiply this one by negative three, which would give me a negative three right here. So if I add those two together, that would be a zero, right? But I want them to switch places. I want, the, uh, I want it to end like that because I don't want that zero to end up here. I want it to end up here. And if I'm multiplying it by three and adding it to row two, wouldn't it end up in row two? That's not what I meant to say. Hold on. Sorry, multiplying the top row by negative three and adding it to row two. Okay, so if I multiply the top row by negative three, I'm going to get negative three, negative three, negative six, and negative 57. I don't want to leave it in row one though. I want it to be in row two. I want row one to stay by itself. One, one, two, and 19. Row two is where I want to leave what what just happened. You see what I'm saying? So I guess I don't need this because it's going to end up in row two anyway. Does that make sense? Okay. So now when I combine these, what do I get? Zero, negative two, negative four, negative 26. And let's go ahead and leave row three alone for right now. Okay, so, so far I've been successful by getting a one here and a zero here. What I need is a one here and a one here, and I need both of those to be zeros. Okay, do you see why this is a little bit confusing? I am not disagreeing with you in that at all, I promise. Okay, so what do I need right here? What do you notice about all the numbers in this row? They're all negatives and evens, right? So couldn't I divide it or multiply it by negative one half? Okay, so if I do that, I get one, one, two, 19. I get zero, one, two, and 13, right? And then of course I didn't do anything to the third row, so I just leave it alone. Okay, so far? Okay, one here, one here, that's awesome. I need a one here, zero here, that's awesome. I need a zero here and a zero here, okay? So what if I said, what if I took the bottom row and subtracted the top row? So I took R3 and subtracted R1, but I leave it in R3. If I took the bottom row and subtracted the top row and left it in the third row. 
So I'm going to leave the top row alone because that's really pretty much already what I need, right? All I need in the top row is a 1 right here. 0, 1, 2, and 13. That row is even what I need already, right? So let's say 1 minus 1. 0. 3 minus 1. 2. 2 minus 2. 0. And 25 minus 19. 6. So I'm almost there, right? What do I need? I need a 0 right here and a 1 right here, correct? Okay, so if I'm going to get a 0 right here, <clears throat> well, the quickest way I, I can see of doing that is multiplying this row by, only because it's closer, right? And it has a 0 right here, so that's not going to mess with this. If I multiply this by a negative 2 and add it to row 3, so if I say 2 times row 2 minus row 3, so what do I do with row 1 and row 2? So 2 times row 2 is going to be 0, 2, 4, and 26. So if I add that to row 3, that's going to be 0, 0, 4, and 32. Um, excuse me, I'm subtracting. So this should just be 20. Pardon me. I can't add them because that would just be, that would be 4 and I don't need 4, I need 0. Thank you. Everybody okay with that? I even wrote subtracting and then add it anyways. I'm a freak. So I need a 1 here, a 1 here, and a 1 here. I need a 0 here, a 0 here, and a 0 here. What do you notice? 4. They're both divisible by 4, so let's multiply the bottom row by 1 fourth. 1, 1, 2, 19, 0, 1, 2, 13, 0, 0, 1, 5. Whoops, sorry. I got my diagonal of 1's and I got my triangle of zeros. That is Gaussian elimination. That's the Gaussian form. So what I do with that then is I can actually go back to the equations that it matches up with. I can say x plus y plus 2z equals 19 and y plus 2z equals 13 and z equals 5. And I can easily solve that system from right there because z equals 5, I put 5 in there and figure out that y is 3. And then put 5 here and 3 here and figure out what y is, I mean, excuse me, what x is. Pretty convoluted, yes? Okay. The difference then in Gaussian elimination, which is what we just did, and Gaussian Jordan elimination, and I promise you I used to call that Gaussian Jordan elimination until I did my master's degree and all my professors called it Gaussian Jordan elimination with like a zh in front of the Jordan and so um, I have no way of knowing that if that's right or not but I also respect them so I'm just that's just how I say it now okay um, the what's different is that you actually have to take the steps to make that a zero that a zero and that a zero right? But you have to combine them in such a way that you don't mess with these other zeros or that one. Okay? So I'm not going to show you that. When you get there, we're just going to work on the problems you get. Is that fair? Okay? Because showing you one example is not going to do any good for that. We'll work on, if you can get this far, you can get the, the next far, the farness. Farness? That's not a word. You know what I'm talking about though, right? Okay? I'm afraid to ask if you have any questions about this. Not afraid because you know I hope you. You know I will. Okay. It's just this is not something we're used to doing because we're used to doing elimination. If you think about it though, it's kind of like elimination. Okay. Or addition, whatever they call it in the book. It's just a lot longer and there's a lot more like technical things that you have to get written down and things like that. Remember where to put whatever line you're trying to get. Do I leave line two alone? Do I leave line three alone? What am I doing? You see what I'm saying? 
So my advice to you is when you're doing these, just be careful. Okay, you've got your work that you're writing down in your notebooks. Make sure you're writing that down as you go um, to keep from getting lost in the steps. Okay, do you have any questions? I know that you may not have questions yet because you haven't started. I totally get that. But what's going to happen when you get there and you do have questions? You can ask them because you know I'll answer. Okay.